All right, folks, Sega Sonic fan here, and I've got some exciting news. I've got a brand new invention to show you all. This one's been a long time coming. This is a bit of a dream of mine come true, as simple as it is. It's something very basic, but very, very useful. And you might be able to tell already what it is. It's a way to, to play and run a Sega CD Model 1 drive outside of the Sega CD Model 1. For those that might not be aware, this is the cable that connects this drive to the motherboard for a Model 1 Sega CD or Mega CD. And it's a very short cable. Also, you know, maybe yours is damaged. I don't know. Um, things can happen over the decades. But the bigger problem is that it's really short. And when you need to troubleshoot and repair these systems, you can't actually access the optical drive. Uh, boy, is that annoying. And that has been a huge headache for me for many years. Um, I've done things where I've kind of like you know, kind of bent this outwards to try to get the drive kind of part way out. But it's it's just a big nightmare. And the way it was originally designed, I'm sure Sega had, you know, a bunch of extension cables and other, you know, proprietary debug gear that we no longer have access to or never really did have access to. So Sega Sonic fan designs to the rescue. I have designed this brand new cable adapter, which is quite a bit longer and can be extended even further than this to almost any length. But as you can see, it's about double the length, which for my purposes right now is all I actually need. Should you want a longer one, let me know. It's also got nice handy test points. As we zoom in here, you can see there's all these test points here if you need to debug any signals coming from the connector. And it turns out these connectors, the reason I had to do this is because these connectors are not made anymore. They're a very, uh, very unusual pinout and uh, pitch. And so I had to design the Sega CD Flex from scratch. And it uses a nice modern style connector. These connectors are super common and easy to come by and are a standard pitch. So these won't go out of stock anytime soon as far as usability, hopefully we'll get at least a decade or two out of this. And uh, yeah, there's not much more to it other than that. You plug one into the Sega CD and plug one into the system, one into the system, and you just have a nice, long, durable, you know, flexible cable. And so my plan is to sell this in conjunction with uh, an elevation kit because the, the other thing about the drive is it actually when it ejects, this board goes below the standoff supports, which is kind of annoying because, you know, you have to have those in the system. So I'm going to design a standoff support that will elevate the tray as well. So then you can, you can eject, you can test all the mechanics and all the electronics, all in your safety of your workbench outside of an actual Model 1 Sega CD enclosure, which has the Genesis on top of it. Pretty cool, huh? So yeah, let me know if you want one of these. I might, I'm gonna start taking pre-orders soon. I'm also working on my, my secret Virtual Boy project. So I will have updates on that in the coming uh, weeks, hopefully. Um, and I'm making a lot of progress on that. I've also not forgotten about you folks that want the Sync Clean Pro and want more Unigen orders filled. Just very busy with other stuff right now, but I have people on wait lists and I have not forgotten about anybody and we'll be finishing up all these projects in the coming months. Uh, first, I wanna show you though, a little more uh, about the Sega CD that you might have not known, given that this has always been under a game system before. And this is a very useful thing. Um, first off, you get yourself a test CD that you care deeply about. In this case, it's the album by Pink from the early 2000s. And so you'll see in my little crappy debug display here, I'm gonna go in and play a song. early OO vibes there. Now I'm going to lift this up because I'm going to eject it. And like I said, the uh, the tray goes below the supports. So that's why I'm going to design a, a thing so you don't have to lift it up like I'm doing right now. But check out what happens when I press the reset button to eject it. Um, I guess that time I didn't do it, but sometimes what you'll find is it will actually not fully stop the CD press start here, when you hit the eject button. Let's try that again. Maybe I can't replicate the bug. It did it right before I started the camera, as these things go sometimes. But maybe it's playing nice now. Nope, there it goes. 
So you see that? You got a nice scratched disc. disc. <laughs> nice, nice scratched disc right there. Um, Freudian slip. And uh, that's no good, right? You don't want to have your Pop Full Mail original CD in there when that happens. That's a bad day. So my advice to you all is to never, ever, 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 ever use the reset button to eject your discs. Just don't do it. Go into this display here and go to the, the eject that way. And then it will always initiate a hard stop with the, uh, with the motor itself. And so I, th I believe what it is, is it's the, uh, it's the control of the actual brushless DC motor that, um, you know, essentially if you, I don't know if it's, if it's, if it's, you just, you just pull the, uh, you just stop giving it, um, power or you actually, I, I forget the, the circuitry, I forget what you have to do to make it, uh, do a hard stop for a stepper motor, but, um, clearly there's, there's a, there's a method that the microcontroller is doing that. And when you hit reset, you're actually, you're actually, uh, shutting power off to the microcontroller and a whole bunch of other stuff, I think, or at least it's, you know, anyway, point is it's a little buggy. It's not perfect by any means. And the consequences of it not being perfect can be very dire when you have an expensive game disc. And so I'm going to show you here. I'm just going to open and close it a bunch of times. Also, it's just fun to show off my working belt and gear mech. Look at how clean and nice that is. And you'll see I'm just opening and closing it a bunch of times. I'm going to go, I'm going to play again, skip a couple tracks, open it, and it's a hard stop, it looks like, every time. So uh, yeah, just a little just a little advice for a way to protect your game discs a little bit better, because we all love Sega, and uh, we want to make sure those discs last last a long time. So uh, yeah, that's it for this upgrade. Let me go ahead and turn this off and just show you. Oh, let's not uh, knock the disc here. Again, this is uh, this is part of me not having a proper support in here. Um, and this is why you use test discs, because you don't care if those get scratched. Don't use a test game, unless it's a burn, by the way. Highly recommend it. But ha, ha, um, but yeah, this is this is the, uh, the connection. And it's just plug and play, folks. So uh, you just plug it in there, and it's uh, essentially a one-to-one -one fit. I meticulously recreated this connector and... Uh, yeah, and now you have a nice long cable. And like I said, I have I actually have these these are standard connectors.